The fight centers on <laughs> intoxicating hemp products, which have developed into a multi-billion dollar industry subject to few rules and regulations. Some marijuana companies and trade groups are pushing Congress to close a loophole that allows the production and sale of intoxicating substances derived from legal hemp. The hemp industry has a very different ask for lawmakers. Leave the federal definition of hemp unchanged, they say. In a quote, this will probably be one of the more interesting debates and discussions in the Farm Bill. In a quote, House Agriculture Chair G.T. Thompson, Republican from Pennsylvania, told Politico earlier this month. It's the culmination of similar fights happening in state houses around the country as the nation tries to navigate a completely new industry rife with legal complexities created by distinctly different federal laws for marijuana and hemp. The loophole originated in 2018 when the last farm bill that President Trump signed legalized hemp of, uh, or cannabis with less than 0.3 THC percentage. The principal psychoactive component of the plant and cannabis with more than 0.3% THC, meanwhile, is considered marijuana and remains federally illegal. Many lawmakers who backed hemp legalization six years ago did not realize they were approving an intoxicating substance. In a quote, I supported the last farm bill and I was okay with hemp being used for industrial use and things like that, said Representative Doug LaMoffa, a Republican lawmaker from Northern California. And let me just add that he is a major prohibitionist who speaks out regularly about the impact of illicit cannabis cultivation um, has on his district. And this is also the same guy that did the whole thing with the he did the prop with the, the bulldozer that we covered here on Hyatt Nine News when he was bulldozing an illegal grow. And in a quote, says i watched what happened after that and a whole bunch of people got i think kind of horn swoggled h-o yeah horn swoggled yeah <laughs> that's a daleism right there dale isn't that a daleism you're gonna have to use that in a sentence now dale uh capitol hill is not first uh not first to this debate though connecticut already moved to restrict intoxicating hemp products louisiana may vote this week on a bill to outright ban hemp products with any amount of thc and missouri's attorney general launched an investigation last month into intoxicating hemp products on Capitol Hill, the main question with a House markup of a of the farm bill looming on Thursday is whether House Agricultural Committee Republicans have enough support on their own caucuses to bring an amendment that would either put more guardrails around hemp products or prohibit them from having any amount of THC. Representative Randy Fensta, Republican from Iowa, told Politico last week that uh, they are, in quotes, on the path of closing the loophole, he said. But Representative Dusty Johnson and David Rouser both declined to talk about a potential amendment addressing the issue as of last Thursday. LaMafa, a stronger supporter of closing the loophole, was not even sure as of last Wednesday which lawmaker, if any, would be introducing an amendment. In quotes, he said, I'd be very inclined to carry or support a refinement of that, LaMafa said. Kentucky Republicans Representative Jim Cormer and uh, Mitch McConnell took the lead on legalizing hemp. McConnell has remained a champion of industrial hemp products, pr proudly supporting a hemp fiber uh, mask during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. In a quote, by recognizing the difference in statute between hemp and its illicit cousin, we can remove much of the confusion facing farmers, producers, and state agencies, McConnell said on the floor of the Senate in 2018 when he introduced hemp legal legalization legislation mcconnell's office declined to comment for this story of course they did the opposite however has happened post legalization the market for hemp rope fabric and other non-ingestible products has was slow to develop even sales of CBD products were stymied by a lack of federal regulations, leading many national regulators or retailers to steer clear of those products. Eventually, intoxicating hemp derivatives such as Delta-8 THC and Delta-10 THC became popular. Hemp companies also found it was possible to get enough Delta-9 THC into a beverage or edible to have psychoactive effects without, with psychoactive effects without breaking the guidelines of the 2018 Farm Bill. Intoxicating products, while a boom for the hemp industry's economic outlook challenged struggling state legal marijuana industries. The cheaper cost and greater availability of intoxicating hemp-infused products made them a 
potent rival of the cannabis industry in many states. Hemp products are not subject to the same stringent regulations and high taxes as marijuana products in many states where both are legal. And as they've grown in popularity, they've also garnered greater scrutiny from anti-drug and family groups who raise concerns about intoxicating products getting into the hands of kids. It's always what about the children? In a quote, FDA's refusal to issue regulations on CBD products has effectively turned hemp and cannabis companies against each other and other when we should be working towards some same purposes. Sam Jim Hagedorn, the co-founder of Cornbread Hemp, a Kentucky-based hemp company. The U.S. Cannabis Council, whose uh, members include many of the country's largest marijuana companies, sent a letter to key lawmakers <laughs> last month warning of a national crisis if lawmakers don't crack down on intoxicating hemp products. The Midwest Hemp Council sent its own letter to Congress warning the dire consequences for farmers uh, if the definition of hemp is altered in the farm bill. Now, conservative Republicans and some cannabis companies are our ironic bedfellows on Capitol Hill, both wanting the loophole closed for very different reasons. LaMaffa, for example, tells Politico he hates cannabis, and yet in this case, he has the same policy position as many state legal marijuana companies. Hemp groups are asking for a third approach, more regulations like testing and limiting purchases to consumers over 21, but the loophole stays open. In a quote, there are certain ways of going about it that could shut down the whole industry, and there are others that would only shut down parts of the industry, said U.S. Hemp Roundtable General Counsel Jonathan Miller, adding that none of the proposals he's heard of on Capitol Hill are acceptable. The toothpaste is out of the tube, he added. Even the cannabis industry is divided on whether to close the loophole. Cureleaf, America's largest cannabis company in terms of revenue, is launching a line of beverages uh, with with a law, but intoxicating uh, for most people. Amount of Delta 9 THC Cureleaf CEO Boris Johnson told Politico the beverages will have no more than 5 milligrams of THC and are made fully within the guidelines of the Farm Bill. Cureleaf is a member of the USCC, but does not align with the trade group on the closing of the loophole. Poll. In a quote, we would prefer that it be one regulatory framework for all can cannabinoids, Jordan said. We um, were at that uh, point in time right now with the hemp industry where there needs to be some rules put around what you can put what you can and can't put into these products, he says. Cody Strauss, founder and CEO of Humboldt County cannabis brand Northern Emeralds, doesn't want the entire loophole closed. Northern Emeralds sells marijuana products in California, but is also entering into a licensing deal that would allow a hemp-based dispensary to open under their brand name in Austin, Texas, where marijuana products are not legal. Strauss thinks California uh, should strongly regulate intoxicating hemp products that are sold in the state. He does not, however, support federal regulations that could limit intoxicating hemp products in states where marijuana is not legal. And that could restrict the ability of California producers to cultivate and export hemp out of the state to places such as Texas. In a quote, everyone's talking about this as though it was a mistake that needs to be corrected, Strauss said. I think it was a mistake that was correct. In, uh, in an opinion shared by Oregon Senator Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat and a friend of mine, while not on the Senate Agriculture Committee, Wyden is a senior member of the Senate who represents a state with large hemp and cannabis industries. That, that, that means his opinion on this carries weight. Wyden wants more regulation from the FDA on things like packaging and age limits. His office shared with Politico, and he does not support closing the loophole and says it would be a step backwards to criminalization. In a quote, he says, if we've learned one lesson from the failed war on drugs, Wyden said, recriminalizing these products won't make communities safer or keep the products out of the hands of kids. As the House Agriculture Committee prepares for its Thursday markup, lawmakers are still mulling whether or not to introduce an amendment that would close this loophole and exactly how far that amendment would go. A deciding factor could be support from fellow Republicans, some of whom have already come out against it. And in a quote, final quote, I don't think the federal government should be involved in this discussion, says Representative Derek Van Orden, a Republican from Wisconsin, told Politico 
last week. Well, 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 you guys, seems like some interesting things are going to be going up in regards with the Farm Bill, and it seems like there's interesting lines being drawn in the sand amongst members on Capitol Hill, as well as members in the cannabis industry, and I am just going to follow along and munch on some popcorn that is not hemp-based or cannabis derived but nonetheless yeah. this is jason beck for the high at nine news hour what do y'all have to say about this of course kira leaf did right <laughs> i mean you know of course they did and like we're what we're gonna do as an industry is we're always gonna find a loophole right so mm-hmm. like we find a loophole they close a loophole it's just like a never-ending thing and the only people who can really keep drugs out of the hands of kids and whose job it is to do so is their parents, parents right i agree oh. with that 100 percent. i mean i can't i can't believe i'm about to agree with cure leaf um you know but there definitely should be one regulatory framework we're we're, mm-hmm. we're having this discussion we're talking about this article when the irony that on the top banner of our YouTube page is a, you know, uh, hemp derived cannabinoid gummy company and product company that's selling, uh, you know, legal intoxicating THC products. Look, this this is freaking, this is foul. This is foul. We've already invested so much, and look what's happening state to state. And then there's all these other companies and these people with, you know, they have IP around mm-hmm. these, you know, non T- Delta Nine THC products like. HHC and Delta 8 that they're glad that this is happening because their IP is king and they can sell as much product as they want. And if this continues to be bifurcated as it is, it's just going to harm all of us and it's not going to bring this unity together. It's going to just drive us more farther apart Mm -hmm. and it's going to increase the turmoil and it's going to increase the, you know, the legal um kind of positions of a lot of these companies and we're going to see a lot more lawsuits and in the end of the day the only people that are going to win is lawyers love you dale but you know what i mean like yeah, you yeah, know. yeah 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 our model law sure practice coming in for the, the bank, right? That's right that's right man what what, what do you think about yeah, this dale everybody wins when the family feuds Separate. that's right the, pro- the problem started when they tried to separate this plant by Um, what they thought was the intoxicating nature of it. And it turns out policymakers are divorced from science because if your objective is to keep intoxicating products away from minors, then they fuck this up royally from the jump because THC is not the only intoxicating naturally occurring. And you can produce these synthetic cannabinoids that are intoxicating. We've seen them, THC zero and all the other bullshit that goes into this. And for lawyers, this is just a you know full employment act. For people out there wanting to use a cannabis product, you don't know what the hell to do here. And I can guarantee you in high school and junior high school, kids are smoking Delta 8. Mm-hmm. So if your goal is to keep intoxicating things away from kids, policymakers have rectal myopia here. And now they want to fight about things that should never have been defined the way they were defined because um, I don't think you can control this now, like the toothpaste is out of the tube. But they don't even have a unified goal what we're trying to what we're trying to protect here. Is it kids and kids from what? Okay? Is it athletes or athletes from what? Okay, is it women or women from what? I mean, pick something here and tell us what you're trying what is your goal? We can measure the metrics. Are we achieving it? And if not, fuck this course and let's start this all over again. That's not how it's ever going to work. Because you bring lawyers into it and we look for the loopholes and we're paid to look for this and fight your ass every step of the way. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, make some money doing this, okay? Yeah. No, it's it's correct. The definitions of Ben Robbins' definition, and that's right. The problem is who's creating the definition? Who are the stakeholders that have a voice? in that determination this is this is it's beliefs it's these types of people so you know get with it guys it's already too late but if you make there's a last ditch effort here i don't know but uh obviously i'm coming from a place of abundance whenever i speak so you already know um together let's get together to mm-hmm. produce some kind of value within the community in the industry let's go really substantially make an effort uh to work with the lawmakers and to figure out the future. If we don't, we're pulled into what they decide. And we've already seen what how, how that works out, how that works out for us. So it's not going to be a good thing. I don't know. This is a, this is a touchy subject. It's a, very, it's a hot button issue for Simon Rosanna. It's a show. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. I I feel uh, I feel like uh, we're gonna just keep on watching this. Do you have any thoughts on this, Rico? Before we move on. Yeah, man. Um, follow the science. How about that, America? Follow the science. Well, you know the the the, the yeah. thing about it is this. I'm I'm just really glad that Senator Wyden has taken the position that he has taken, um, because his his voice uh, carries a lot of weight in this conversation, way more than Doug Lamatha in regards to. So I am willing to put money on the fact that there are going to be no changes to the hemp farm bill in regards with the intoxicating substances when they come out with this new draft in September. I really, I really don't think that you can backtrack, but so much, you know, for these hemp guys, man, mm -hmm. like they're making a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you gotta find some way to make it work. Exactly. Personally, I think it should be regulated as regulated or um, as the rest of uh, the cannabis industry on the THC side mm -hmm. or just deregulate everything. Mm -hmm. you know? 